Welcome back to the Lost Facility devlog series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at starting to mask out the terrain so that we can texture it in a realistic manner. So I've been kind of plagued by some PC issues recently, and uh, hopefully those are all done. So that's kind of why we've been taking a little break from this, why I've missed uh, some stuff here. So I am trying to get back into it, but this uh, project file will be available on Patreon uh, with everything that we're doing in this video. So just keep an eye out for that. And we've started to, I started to make the facility itself uh, just very, very briefly. All I've done really is just create a general shape of it and I haven't even put it in place or anything. I was just starting to play around with the modeling. I haven't done a ton of modeling inside Houdini, so I'm not really gonna go over this because I'm sure this is probably going to change, but all I've really done is a tube and some extrusions and a, a slight bevel there to, to create a general shape of our facility. And that's kind of the general size that I'm thinking of, um, but we'll kind of adjust it as need be. And obviously this is not the spot for it. You can kind of see it poking through the train there. We'll move it back over here where it belongs once we kind of get it modeled out the way I'm, I'm looking for. But like I said, we'll go over that in a uh, future video. For now, let's take a look at the masking that I've started to do. So all we're looking to do with the mask is to create some masks for our terrain. So we're gonna be texturing this with triplanar projection and that's going to create uh, some tiling like you see here with the tiling um, UV texture. So we want to break that up. So you just need to create some, some masks. Uh, this is a mask that I just kinda tossed in here. All I've done with this is it's just a height field mask noise and this is just gonna be a general breakup, I think. I um, think I'm gonna need this to, to kind of break up some of the shapes. But let's go ahead and just make one of these other masks by, you know, kind of scratch here. So we'll jump down a uh, height field mask by feature. And we can wire this in and take a look here. So by default, we get this sort of a setting, which honestly may not be that bad of a setting to get maybe with some tweaks if you want to just get the cliff sides to kind of texture those that's actually something that uh, we may end up needing we'll kind of texture this um kind of as we go but i gotta kind of figure that out a little bit as well because i've tried with obs uh, recording to render while i'm recording and uh, some things kind of don't work exactly right. So gotta figure out that all first. So I may not go over texturing in the next video. I may dive more into the modeling and until I can figure that out and decide what I'm gonna do. But let's uh, let's take a look at this. So height field mask by feature is what I'm gonna be doing to create a bunch of these masks. Now, if we're doing it in Gaia, then I could do a bunch of other things that create some really nice masks in there. But we're not using Gaia to, to do this because we've merged so many things together. So we'll just use the, the Houdini nodes. So I may just like play around with the, the slope here. Um, let's actually go for something more like uh, just a general overall mask of our, our terrain here. So uh, let's bring this slope down quite a bit. Just kind of looking to get the overall shape or the, or the overall of our terrain here and honestly like we're we would create a bunch of these we're going to need a bunch of these masks um, and an overall base this actually wouldn't be too bad uh, if i'm looking to just kind of get the the base kind of flat parts of our terrain so i may maybe we'll just set this off to the side i may end up using this and then let's just create a copy of that so we can alt click and drag to create a copy and we can, if we wanted to actually like mask by height, we can kind of combine these. So if we just click compute range here, we can kind of combine these and we can mask off the tops of our terrain. So we only get, you know, a certain height if we want, 
But let's go ahead and just disable that for now. We can also combine this with curvature, which may give us something kind of interesting. So let's try that. So we play around with the max curvature. So raising that's going to kind of take away that, whereas lowering it will kind of give us a little bit more. Let's play around with the contrast of our mask here. We may want to just kind of break this up a little bit. So we had something like this, and we're kind of getting rid of some of that. Maybe let's bring this in. Just kind of up that contrast. And then maybe we lower this. Uh, let's see, where is this? So that's our starting point. So uh, playing around with the ramps here kind of changes your max curvature there. You can also play around with the smooth radius. So if we set this to like 10, that gives us something different as well. And that actually could be okay too, because like I said, we're looking to just kind of break this up quite a bit. So we don't necessarily need something super noisy. Our textures alone are gonna give us something interesting. Um, and as far as that goes, but we want these the red patches are going to be where our or our textures are actually showing up and the white patches are going to be where the Basically um, Like the opacity is so it's going to see through to the to the layers below So we may also bake these out. I haven't we'll have to kind of play around with that once we get to that stage But uh, I want to just layer a bunch of these and I've made some of these other ones as well and we may combine a bunch of these, but if we have an overall just texture that we lay onto this terrain, we're going to just have like a, a base color or whatever, basically a base terrain that we're starting out with. And then we're just layering stuff on top of this. So we would have like this base layer. So everywhere there's red, we would have maybe another texture applied. Obviously there's gonna be a ton of repeating. So that's where these other textures come in or these other masks come in. So if we layer another texture on top of that, then we would start to see some of that breakup with everywhere that there's white and red in here. So I've made a couple of other ones here. So let's just take a look at these real quick. Um, this one's just masking by slope with some height just to get this kind of a shape. And I've just played around with the contrast here. I haven't done anything else. Uh, with min slope angle and max slope angle, just kind of, like I said, just trying to break up the the, ter the terrain and uh, give us some some nice kind of masking going on. I've got another one here. This is just the, the peaks and valleys. So uh, a lot of times with terrains, you'll see the kind of, uh, let's here, let's go to, let's go to the convert height field in the little cracks of our terrain or actually let's go up to this maybe so where the the erosion takes place you may see some things uh, where it's like darker or even uh, lighter on these kind of peaks in in terrain so we may use that as well just to add some some sort of like occlusion type stuff going on and all i've done with this is just used the peaks and valleys mixed with the height settings. So I don't want this necessarily on the kind of like sand portion, but I do want it more on the mountain mountainous areas. And then I've got a, another one here, and this is just, like I said, another base layer. So we yeah, may or may not use these. And uh, like I said, we may end up going to like just bake these out to actual textures, because um, this is kind of like a, a big, like UV area, but that would require a pretty, pretty decent sized texture to get something um, that's high enough quality for a, a terrain of this size. So we have the option on this convert height field. If we take a look at this, and I hop over to the geometry spreadsheet, you can see that we actually do have a mask here. So we can actually, let's just add a color. Um, take a look here. 
uh, at mask is greater than zero. Is that gonna work? Uh, point. Let's see. We want this on. Is that a point group? Okay. Yeah. So that's working. Uh, kind of. So maybe we do point five. Yeah. So there you see that we have our noise. So we can convert this over to one of the other ones that we created and you can see that we get some some different things going on here and let's just uh where's our uv is this uv yeah i want that uv showing so we can use that uh, we would be able to use this attribute in that shader but we can't uh we can't like rename these so if i go ahead and come to the layer bindings just call this mask i don't know underscore four if I take a look back at the, the convert height field here and look at the geometry spreadsheet, we don't have that mask there and it's not anywhere on our terrain. So I'll have to, to work through that. I've not, I've not textured terrains this way. Usually I use the, um, I use Gaia and then I just use the mask that I export from Gaia. So. I will work through that and figure out what I need to do with that and make a decision based off that. But anyways, that's kind of where I'm at and what I, what has been going on, why I've kind of been missing um, some, some work on this and haven't really been able to, to work on it. So thank you guys for sticking with me through those PC issues. I think we are all good now, fingers crossed at least. But like I said, I will have to work through how to get OBS to not freak out and actually record uh, something that's the least of decent quality and not just lag all over the place with, with rendering um, so that I can show kind of what we're doing with the texturing process here. So that may take a little bit of time to, to work through that. So may or may not continue on with the texturing in the next video and may move over to, like I said, the modeling of our facility, which I've kind of somewhat started here in this video or in this project file. But like I said, this project file is gonna be available on Patreon. So if you want to go through any of the, the settings or anything that I have, I have done in this project, then feel free to hop on over there and grab it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.